I'll send a message just about that. All right, we are live. All right. Beanie blessings and happy new year, community. Welcome to Dead Town Tope Tuesdays with me, Dead Town Lindsay, the Bean God. Uh, this is live streaming on Facebook and will be put on YouTube later. If you don't want to be seen or heard, please mute your mic and turn your camera off. Please unmute yourself if you do want to read and mute when you're not sharing out of consideration um, for your fellow artists. Um, I'm going to keep the intro real short tonight because everyone here already knows the rules. Um, I'm under the weather. I have strep throat, but I'm, of course, happy to be here. Um, so... We're just having one rule and everyone knows the rule. You can't be an asshole. If you're gonna be an asshole, you're gonna get booted obviously and out of the room. Okay, so just let's all be kind and good to each other and have a good time. Um, okay. And I mean that in the nicest possible way, even though it might sound like I don't. Okay, um, each artist has four minutes to share. If you haven't, let me know already. Drop your name in the chat and I'll add you to the list. Um, to learn more about the words right, you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, where we're live streaming right now. Um, we have shows and workshops almost every night of the week. Um, speaking of workshops, um, on January 31st, I'm going to be teaching a sonnet, sonnet workshop at 9 p.m. Eastern time. It won't be recorded or live stream. Um, it is $5 to attend if you want to learn more about that. Um, you can check the events under Words Right, or you can DM me, and um, I will give you more information, but I'm excited to teach that in the new year. Um, before we do our open mic, we are going to do our 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 exercise so we can center ourselves now, work on our breathing. So what are five things we can see? What are five things we can see in front of us right now? can see all the beautiful people in this room. I can see my TV. I can see my tea mug. I can see the stickers on my computer. And see all the windows I have popped up on my screen. I can see myself. There are five things you can see. What are four things you can touch in front of you? Just four things you can touch. And feel the floor beneath me. And feel my cold hands. And feel the coffee table under me. And feel, feel my blanket. What are four things you can touch? Four things you can touch. What are three things you can hear? I hear a little buzz in my AirPods. I hear a little silence, silence, silence in the room. I hear the rain outside. It's raining in New York today. What are three things you can hear? What are two things you can smell? I'm sick, so I can't smell anything. But if everyone's healthy, what are two things you can smell? And what's one thing you can taste or feel? One thing you can taste or feel. I can feel good energy in the room. I like that. Okay. There are five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear. Two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste or feel. Okay. I will add you black silver beanie blessings. Welcome to our space. All right. We'll do our I statement at the end of the evening, like we do. Okay, I'm going to drop the list one more time. Okay. The current list. All right. So on deck. We have Ethan Mackler, so please welcome to the mic now. He is a producer here. Um, oh, thank you, Chris. He is a producer here 
at Worries Right. You can catch his show every second and fourth Wednesday of the month at 8 p.m. Eastern time. He has a wonderful open mic and he also has features on his show. Uh, he has his Poetic Robin Hood podcast. He has his own open mic Thursdays, um, the third Thursdays of the month at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, and he has his own press um, that he just started Prometheus um, quarterly, which is wonderful. And we're very proud of all the work he's been doing. Um, he's going to help me out a little bit tonight because I'm not feeling 100%. So thank you, Chris, for being here. Appreciate you. So um, please give him a warm Dead Pando, welcome to Christmas. Uh, thank you, Lizzie. And I do hope you're feeling better soon. Um, okay, so I will bring up the poems that I have written. Um, this one I wrote the other day. It's called um, Babylon's Queen. Too much liquor was always enjoyed. The euphoria was heard everywhere. Whether real or imagined, it did not matter. Sing the praises of her majesty who looks elsewhere. That is, until another tried taking her self-proclaimed crown. The hops of barley and sweet liqueur became too much. This queen of a new Babylonia lost her province. Once she assumed cow... <clears throat> One she assumed kowtowed in blind reverence. New Babylonia has fallen, your majesty. If you visited more, you would have known it all along. And I'll read one more. Um, let's see if I can. This one is called Postmodern Prometheus. Who am I? Who are you? Am I to be the protagonist of my insane story? Who will bother to write my stories? The bird devoured my heart long ago. You are too late to claim the spoils of this war. Left to gaze upon my past ignorance as always, fumbling around once again in darkness, even though I stole my reality's fire long ago from those who I perceived to be deities in my imagination. Thank you. I'm starting off with fire tonight. That was awesome. Everyone give some snaps. There's some applause for Chris and Wes. It was wonderful, Chris. So many layers and all of that. I would snap, but on top of being sick, also painful hand eczema. So I'm going to do the death applause because we want to make sure we include everyone right that's fine it's understandable <laughs> thank, you. thank you thank you always wonderful to hear you thank you for being here as always a, a wonderful member of our team uh please check out all he's doing he will drop in the chat where you can follow him um he just keeps growing and just keeps doing more things and that's what that's what we're all doing in 2023 um so thank you chris all right we're going to keep going and our executive producer, Marissa Prada, has entered the room. So welcome, Marissa. Happy New Year. Um, all right. On deck, we have Star Child. Um, but please welcome to the mic now one of my favorite bassists and musicians from Boston, Massachusetts, Ethan Mackley. Thank you. Uh, hold on a moment. Uh, could you go with someone else, please? Yeah, no problem. Right, no problem. All right. So we'll go back to Ethan when he's ready. Um, but if they are ready now, uh, they are um, a producer and host um, on our Out Loud podcast with the words right at Red Green Books based on the anthology I edited. Um, so and they are coming from the Virginia area and they're wonderful spoken word artists and poets. So please welcome to our the mic our friend Star Child. All right. So I'm gonna do a slam piece that I had memorized like a year ago 
and I haven't said it a whole lot since then. And so hopefully I'll be able to just flow, but I might <laughs> fall apart in the middle of it. We'll see. Okay, here we go. You can call me Rain Man because I dance naked in the rain and because my brain is autistic. I don't count toothpicks or perform other party tricks for neurotypicals. I'd rather twist my words into absurd sculptures of sound, spinning them around until I've found a way to say what it's like to pray every day for friends to play with who will not ghost me if I text them more than I'm supposed to. When I feel closer to someone than they feel to me, and I get way too real, way too quick, and the words I say are too thick, and nitpicky prickly trick sticklers think I'm up to trickery when I'm literally just being me. Not even knowing what that means, just that I like to be seen the way the air feels between my eyes and your eyes when you don't look away. When you stay long enough to brave my rough, awkward, clumsy that some people call creepy because I'm too deep for them. I'm not going to be your cup of tea if you want Earl Grey. The words I say are at least half gay because that's the way that God made me in her image. She didn't give me such a strange mind because God's unkind, but because God's even weirder than I am with blue lipstick and glitter in my beard in a Mardi Gras dress with butterfly wings. It stings sometimes when people tell me to sing more quietly or stop bringing them my poetry. I'm going to... I'm an artist in search of epic adventure. That's why I've been censored by church officials who are incensed by my queer sensibilities and prophetic proclivities. They call it iniquity when I'm literally just being me, not even knowing what I am or whether there's a plan or is this just an improvised song that I'm making up as I go along that gets so many words wrong and keeps trying to end strong. I just want to belong somewhere. I'm searching for a hidden family of weirdos like me, and each time that I find another, they're more than a sister or brother because they're completely unbothered by me. And they'd rather share art with me than keep their eyes on the screen, erasing the unseen world outside of it as though all of reality could be absorbed into the World Wide Web. I'd rather walk through dozens of spider webs than get stuck on the internet and let it suck my soul dry like a giant tarantula. Sometimes I feel like a tarantula. Just wanting to hide and bide my time, disguised and unsupervised, at least then I wouldn't be despised. But I've realized that I have wise words to preach. And I want to reach the other weirdos like me who nobody else can understand. So that's why I stand before you risking rejection again. But maybe this time I'll win. Give some love to Star Child Friend. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful slam piece. Uh, I love when we get hey. to the Star Child. Uh, thank you so much for being here, Star Child. Um, welcome to our space. Um, is there anything you have coming up you'd like to promote, books, or you know, anything got going on besides Out Loud? Well, I made a book called um, Becoming God. And um, let's see. Oh. And Shane Maynard did the cover. Um, and so it's not like it's super, you know, it's just kind of a local, like, sort of hybrid self published kind of thing. I've just got a bunch of copies of it. But if anyone wants one, um, they're like $15. Awesome. Congratulations. We love Shane Manor and Gorilla Poets here. Uh, they have done my book covers and many of the people in this space uh, for Runner Green Books and beyond. Uh, so congratulations on that. Please get a copy of their book. It's a beautiful cover, but Shane did create it. So we should not be shocked about it because Shane is brilliant. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Star Child. Um, we look forward to hearing more from you later this evening. All right. Um, I just want to check in with Ethan before we move forward. Okay. Yeah, I'm all set. All right, here we go.
Thank you. Yes. Always so good to hear Ethan. Always love hearing the bass. Ethan has inspired me since I met him here at Word is Right to eventually learn how to play bass. That's one of my goals for 2023. So, and he looks better in a beanie and glasses than I do, in my opinion. I think he does, in my opinion. <laughs> He's part of the beanie mafia. Well, thank you, Ethan. Um, so good to hear you and have you as always. Um, do you have anything you have coming up you'd like to tell the folks about? Uh, nothing pressing at the moment. Um, I mean, there's local stuff around here. Um, well, what, 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 you know, this is uh, internationally broadcast. So anything local you want to let the local folks know about? Uh, well, in Boston, there's the, uh, I guess, the revamped or the rescheduled uh, Garage Poets open mic. I think it's the second and third Friday of the month. And uh, I guess we're kind of hoping to uh, do some more in-person stuff with the Garage Poets. Uh, but nothing is planned for that at the moment. But uh, there have been various in-person open mics I've been doing around here. Portobelli's Pub, Portobelli's Restaurant in um, Brighton, Massachusetts, and Ward 4 in uh, Auburndale, Newton, Massachusetts. I haven't been to that one in a while, but I'll probably be getting around there at some point. Um, well, other stuff will probably come up. But, uh, that's, awesome. Yeah. that's awesome. It's only January 3rd, so certainly more will come up. That's awesome. So if you're able to get to Massachusetts or you're local to this area, go check out the Garage Poets with Jeff Taylor and Ethan and uh, their community. Um, I'll eventually get up to Massachusetts and we'll all meet um, and hang out. But um, that all sounds wonderful. We'll hear more from Ethan uh, later this evening, but we're going to keep going. So on deck, we have Nemo Soom. Um, but please welcome to Mike now. Uh, they are also a producer and one of the hosts of our Out Loud podcast here at Where's Right. They're in the anthology. Um, and they're just a wonderful artist and one of my favorite poets. Um, so please welcome to the mic now, Shafi G. Thank you. Um, so I'm, I'm doing the, uh, this poem I wrote a few weeks ago uh, <clears throat> called Raised Fist and Broken Wrist. If I can get through it, sorry. Um, I don't normally talk about my uh, sexuality very much, but I want this one, you know, whatever. I am both black and gay, none more important than the other, which means when I lay my head down at night, I have nightmares of being pulled out of my bed and beaten. Scenes of Emmett Till's body flashing through my head, screaming, please don't let it be me. I roll over and my mother's cross with Jesus morphs into the body of Matthew Shepard hanging on a fence. Father, I will not forgive them. They know exactly what they did. Images that haunt me, I wish I could run away. But then visions of Ahmad Arbery float through my mind. It says, sit still, hands up. You have the right to remain silent before the gun blast. Is it a right if I will never speak again? My friends say, don't focus on the bad, get out and have fun. But I remember Pulse nightclub and I wonder if their friends told them the same. Like instead of worrying, I should just rest in peace or pieces of bullet fragments ricocheting between the notes of my favorite song. Black and gay, black and gay. They say, I can't hold a raised fist if my wrist is broken, as if my melanin is produced in the ovaries or if my preference changes the texture of my hair. It's as if they don't understand the definition of and, and I am. Wow. Wow. It was, inc it was incredibly powerful. Thank you for sharing that. I'm so shocked you. Um, it's not always easy to talk about our truths, even in 2023, but I'm happy that we confidently do it. And um, I'm so happy Shaki is producing the Out Loud, anthology, uh, Out Loud um, podcast that goes with the anthology here at Worries Right and Mary Green Books. Um, we just had a wonderful episode um, Sunday uh, where we talked about allyship. Um, and our next um, artist was one of our wonderful panelists. And I'm so happy I've gotten to know them 
um, over the last few months. And I'm going to get to meet them this year, which I'm really excited about. So please welcome in person. So please welcome to the mic now, Nemo soon. Thank you. Oh, there I go. Yeah, I'm uh, getting everyone sick virtually. Sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's spreading. It's spreading. Okay. Um, no, thank you for, for holding this space when you're not feeling well. I'm so glad to be here. Um, and that was a fantastic, I really enjoyed um, uh, being a part of and also listening to everyone else talk in the in the show on Sunday. It was really great. Um, I know this was going to come as a shock, but I have prepared a micro triptych. Um, which for those of you who, who are new to it um, is three um, uh, thematically connected micro poems. For my wickedness, I labored in rooms full of rotting boxes that couldn't be sorted, stacks of moldering paper that couldn't be moved and the fetid smell of fresh shame mixing with the old. I wonder if I will ever be strong enough to divert a river through my heart to wash away the filth and end these wretched thoughts so I can start again clean. Mr. Grief has come for your extraction. He will pull and tug on that nasty pain you've been holding on to. Putting his boots squarely on your chest in the midst of the smell of the chemicals used to clean hospital beds and mortuary slabs. He'll dig his heels into your shoulders on either side of your broken heart and strain until there's a splash of blood and pus and tears and it has come free. A hundred paces or two into the exclusion zone I found a flower blooming, delicate blue and yellow petals waving to and fro in the gentle wind. It seemed so calm and certain of itself, unaware of the subtle resonance of the explosion that killed our family. I could not help but wonder what else I might find alive. Thank you. Give some love to Nemo, friends. Thank we you. love we love Nemo's micro triptychs. Um, they taught a wonderful workshop recently with Grill Poets where we uh, we did those exercises. Um, it's a great way to get out your feelings. It's a great way to push yourself out of your comfort zone. And I'm excited for when they teach those workshops again. So thank you for being here, Nemo. Um, he, uh, they do wonderful work with guerrilla poets. You're teaching workshops in person this weekend, right? Uh, yes, I'm doing a an in person writing workshop on duality. So it's in person, and the FOMO is real. <laughs> like if I felt better and could get North Carolina, I'd be there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, well, I'm excited for you doing that. Yes, Cerebell Mental is teaching Thursday. And if I'm feeling better, I will be in attendance. We love Cerebell Mental here. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm excited. Yeah, Sarah's wonderful. Um, well, thank you. And Nemo has a book. So if you're interested in Nemo's book, please DM them um, and learn more, learn about all the amazing things they're doing in North Carolina. And thank you, Nemo. Thank We're you so much, keep, Lizzie. Yeah, we love Nemo. I love Nemo so much. Um, on deck, we got our executive producer, Marissa Prada. Uh, but please welcome to the mic now, our friend, Black Silver. Hello, audio chat. Can you hear me okay? All right, cool. I got a piece for you. This piece is called Full Moon Drama. So I'm going to get right into it. Here we go. Hold on, there's something on there. Okay, there we go. Here we go, full moon drama. I'm a witch, I'm a shaman, I'm full moon drama. 
three four cups of coffee at 3 a.m. Turn up like triple full moon goddess. Insomnia, I'm a vampire. Stayed up all night to write. I bleed on the paper like blood sacrifice on a full moon at night, like volcanoes full of lava. I was baptized in darkness. The moon is my goddess. I go stupider like Sailor Moon, Sailor Jupiter. I spit on the mic like a llama. You ain't ready for that full moon drama. A drama king or a drama queen? Can I get a drum roll, please? All cards on the table like queen of diamonds. How you gonna hide when I am the darkness? Thought it was a joker, but you ain't ready for that king of diamonds. Life a game of cards got four queen of diamonds. That means I got four mamas. It took four red goddess to raise this monster. I'm Leviathan out the water. I'm low like a root chakra. You ain't ready for that full moon drama. Fuck all is freedom. I might come off rich and handsome. I might come off too bright for black skin. I might come off dangerous. I might come out swinging. You went ready for that full moon chaos. And that's that piece. Yes, Black Silver. Give, give them some love. Yep, thanks for listening. Oh, it's a pleasure to hear you. And uh, you can you can follow them on mm -hmm. IG where the poetry is split free, but the bling is not. They also have an amazing jewelry line out. So they will drop in the chat uh, where you can find them on IG and all the amazing art. Um, their jewelry is so cool. So I highly recommend uh, looking into that. Um, anything else you want to promote, friend? Ah, uh, no, just uh, follow me on IG, uh, more Denti Triple Seven Beads Unleashed. Um, uh, poetry, poetry on there, and uh, check out my bling. You know, I've got jewelry for sale, so um, check me out. Instagram is how I interact with the world, so find me on there. Yeah. Now, Instagram, I think, is where most of us connect. It's a, it's a great platform for that. So definitely check out the jewelry line, uh, the poetry, and you can you can find them regularly at our Word is Right program. All right. Thank you, Black Silver. We look forward to hearing more from you this evening. All right. On deck, we got a uh, generalissimo, but please welcome to Mike now, our executive producer, poetry mama. Uh, I think that's her new beanie from the gym. They go to as from the text message in our chat. Um, yeah, happy new year, Marissa Prada. What's up, guys? Yeah, I'm rocking the the beanie for defined, so I gotta keep it kind of clean tonight. <laughs> I can't no erotica. <laughs> but I figured if you want, um, I can read some from the gun violence anthology. Um, read, read. I mean, you can read erotica. You can read, whatever, you know, you I know. Can't, not no. if I'm in there. Not if I'm in their merch. Oh, uh, is that the name of the Jimmy you teach at? Yeah. Oh, okay. I will. Yeah, Marissa is um, putting out the third anthology with Red or Green Books. That is their press, where most of us are published. With I'm in the anthology as many as, as well as many people in this room. Um, and it'll debut this spring. So we'd love to hear from one of the contributors. Okay, so you guys pick from one to 200, well, one to like 198. 50. 50. <clears throat> All right, this is Doreen Stock and she has, um, a, a short one, so I'll read it and then you can pick a different, another one. This is a micro poem. American child calling 911. An American child is calling for help from the classroom floor whispering to 911. How many of her have been wiped out, smearing herself with their blood and playing dead? She is the center of an American malastrom in an American town calling, 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 
whispering to 911 as if she as she will if she continues continue to whisper help 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 forever in her dreams Valde, Texas, 2022. All right, someone pick another page number. The same pages? Yep. One to 198. 47. 47. All right, so 47 is Don. Oh, wait, hang on. I can count. All right, so this is Diane Murray Ward's poem, Shivers. I'm going to make this a little bigger so that I can read it better. All right. I'm confined. I feel prejudiced against. I feel used. I feel mislabeled. I am, hor I am mortified. I feel as if I haven't a voice or a say in some of the actions I am forced to perpetrate. There are those like me that look at me who feels misjudged. Our voices, our thoughts with spokespersons who never asked us our opinion or side of the issues. Why? Because we are only a tool an object, color, hardened by design. You'll use me and I'll cry. You'll die and I won't cry. Well, maybe selfishly. I am despised, propelled against my will. My targets, I, I hear sigh. I cannot deny how much pain and suffering I inflict. I am sickened that I even exist. I can only move when attended. I rely upon others for everything I do. My grooming, where I go, who I interface with. My actions are scripted. I have supportive advocates. I am revered and worshiped. I am international. I am humble beginnings as with most of our shared histories. I can be whored for trouble and pretend I'm for peace. Sometimes I amuse myself into believing that I keep harmony and provide an equal footing. Though through the violence I am capable of inflicting as a last resort. In full disclosure, however, sometimes I'm the insider initiator, the taunter, the eliciter, the darer, the causer, the promoter. Humbled, and in fact, I'm gonna make a note here. I see a, a typo. I, hang on, if I, it means a lot to me to get this right for her, so. Yeah, editing an anthology, it's not an easy thing. Humbled by your need for me, I, as I stated, can only move when attended. I never act alone. I rely upon others for every move I make. I am channeled into a tunnel whose daylight, nightlight starts with a click, stages into a whistling breeze, then dulls upon impact. An impact I never know ahead of time, slowing me down. An impact I did not choose an impact I supplemented without choice because I have no say in my use. I conform without a will of my own. To some, I am attractive in my sleek design, upgrades, ability to devastate you. My presence is unforgettable. I leave marks, cause cavernous spaces. I'm not heroic silver. However, as every bullet knows, we cause shivers. And that is a poem by Diane Murray Ward titled Shivers. Oh, that's wonderful. Let's give some love to our executive producer here. The reason we all get to be in this space right now, Marissa Proud, it looks great in a beanie. Thank you. Woo -hoo! Yeah. I have strep, so that's like, I'm just my low energy. So, but we're here. We're here. 
Oh, I just wanted thank to you. let you guys know that I will be leading a workshop uh, with Guerrilla Poets January 19th, uh, the Writing for Wellness, and I will be leading Writing for Wellness on February 16th as well with Guerrilla Poets. So come through. Are those both Thursdays? Uh, they're both Thursdays, 5 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Eight. Time, 7 p.m. Oh, okay, okay. 7 p.m. Eastern, uh, and it's all on Zoom, and they're all free. Yeah. So if you're not doing grilled poets, by the way, I highly recommend them. They have wonderful facilitators like Marissa, Nemo, Sarah Bell Mental, Maud Duke, Shane Maynard. Um, I, as long as I'm feeling better, I will be there for Sarah's this Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Because it actually took me and Shane a year to realize North Carolina and New York are in the same time zone. It's okay. We figured it out eventually. <laughs> um, but yes, go check that out. Please. Uh, reach out to Green Books to get a copy of the collections, of the anthologies, of the individual authors, of the launches, the original poets, the next 10, the first 15. Uh, Marissa has their own books in the press, and there's more to come. Marissa's published over, including myself, over 200 authors in two years, and that is not something presses do. So if you're exciting. interested in yeah, it's wonderful. We're very, I'm very proud. I'm a five-time published author of Marissa. It's, they believe in my work, um, and I'm very grateful to them. We have the New Mexico Poetry Summit coming up the first weekend of June. Uh, I found the venue, at least for the Friday night open mic. It's going to be dope. And um, yeah, so just, it is a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a weekend event. It's amazing. You can get tickets on the website, redreadgreenbooks.com. Red, R-E-A-D. Thanks, Lizzie. Yeah, thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. So thank you. Um, yeah, go to redgreenbooks.com or follow Marissa on IG Red Green Books or Worries Right or Proud of Painting Poetry where you can find them. Um, and all the cool stuff that's going on. Um, also, I just want to say on first note, Diane Murray Ward is my neighbor. So I actually get to see them often. Um, we live across the park from each other in New York City. Uh, we go on little coffee dates and uh, they bought me the cutest little polka dot plant for my apartment. So just a personal shout out to Diane because I love them so much. All right, I'm gonna keep going. On deck, we got Marianne Peterson, uh, but please welcome to the mic now. They host Cafe Generalissimo every first and third Mondays of the month here at Word is Right at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They are also published uh, with Red Room Books. They're in the anthology out loud. Uh, they have their own book. Um, so, and they got a very cool, we love it, Custy the Crown Hanukkah uh, photo going on their Zoom. So please welcome my friend, Generalissimo Brian Franco. And of course, Krusty, oh, no! Krusty's real name is Herschel Krustovsky. Yes, yes, because Krusty's father was a rabbi. He was an Orthodox rabbi, that's correct. Okay. Yep, yep. Was a, and he showed up, and he showed up at the rabbi's convention, not realizing his father was going to be there. And that was the end of that. But then he sang Oh Mine Papa when they got back together again years later. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yes. And because I will say this, I've had a, a post about, you know, there's always at least one or two good gems in every new Simpsons. And this one, Rusty was being interviewed by Marge in her new talk show. And he said, he said I want to talk about my new holiday movie, A Very Merry Briskness. And for those who are not Jewish, a brisk is a circumcision. <laughs> it's funny. I think it is. Enough. Okay, I'm not going to be on camera because I am in recovery from an operation. I'm a little wrecked, but I'm going to I'm going to read my piece from the Glen anthology, which I just pulled up right now. So it's called Caveats, and it's actually a sloppy poem, which is a long form, a, a longer poem, um, surrounded by, flanked by two. Um, haikus and they can be different haikus or the, or the same haiku. So this is called caveat. <clears throat> Excuse me. To be skillfully lazy can take a lot of extra time and work. I do not feel comfortable saying the word caveat. It's one of those words that sounds like it should be only spoken by people with PhDs. I thought about using it in quite a few poems only to decide against it after looking up the definition. In essence, a caveat is a stipulation or proviso that allows someone to not follow a rule or procedure, basically an exemption or workaround. At least that's what I think. 
caveat is a word often used to replace the word excuse. I'm an ex and, and I am an expert at making excuses that don't cut the mustard. So after I backed my car from the garage the other day, I turned on the radio to MTR, NPR and decided to set my iTunes to Stevie Wonder because I wasn't in the mood to listen to another news report about another mass shooting. Um, if I'm having a bad day, do I get an exemption from listening to another story about a mass shooting? Was the fact a prescription medication suddenly rose from $12 to $218 per month a caveat for me to avoid listening to this news story that almost seems commonplace due to its frequency of occurrence? Have I found a caveat for the indifference I was expressing by choosing Stevie instead? Was I becoming desensitized to mass shootings despite I still can't comprehend how anyone can commit such violence or why a civilian can buy a war weapon expressly made, expressly engineered for accurate killing of multiple humans. I used to think there was an unwritten rule for the natural order of things that says if a mass shooting happens one or two days after another mass shooting, another mass shooting can't happen for at least another three weeks or a month, but the fates found a caveat around that one. How do any of us make sense of any of this? Is there a caveat that allows us to decide one mass shooting is worse than another when it happens at a school rather than a church or synagogue or mosque or gay bar or grocery store or music festival? How about whether the mass shooting happened at a high school, middle school, or elementary school? How about a mass shooting of hate concerning ethnicity, race, religion, sexual orientation, or a combination? Do I live in a country where the inalienable right to have caveats where caveats should not exist exists? There are no caveats or excuses for these mass shootings. There are no caveats or excuses for the indifference expressed by our elected officials who are not passing laws that should make our schools and grocery stores and malls and other public spaces safer. Their indifference is not a caveat or excuse for our indifference. Simply put, there is no excuse for any of it anymore. To be skillfully lazy can take a lot of extra time and work. Thank you. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, they had me at Stevie Wonder, but then they had me at throw out the whole thing. Well, I think Stevie might approve. Oh, Stevie would approve. Brian knows how much I love Stevie Wonder. I named my last book, Inner Visions, as a nod to the great Stevie Wonder, which is available for purchase. So get a copy of Brian's book, get a copy of my book, get all the author's books in the room. Yes, I would sing "Living in the Skies" for if you. This comes out. Please buy this. This is an important anthology. Yes, please do. Please do. Fair and fair. Also, don't forget we have to sponsor the senator. Right, we're trying to get a, a book into every U.S. state senator's hands, and it's like only fifteen dollars, and we send it anonymously. So you can go on the website and pick the state you want. I mean, once it's sold out, you have to pick a different state. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a movement. It's a huge movement. Yeah, I can't wake up and read that someone's lost their child to senselessness anymore or be afraid to go into a bar where my community wants to congregate or anywhere. I mean, is anywhere safe anymore? That's truly the question, is anywhere safe anymore? Thank you so much, Brian. It was an incredibly powerful poem. And if I felt better, I would sing Rim in the Skies for you. But I don't. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you, Brian. We're going to hear more from Brian later this evening. Um, so last in the first round, and then we'll go back to the top of the list. Uh, please welcome. They have a ton of books out. I think they have like eight books or nine books. Um, Marianne Peterson. Oh, you okay, Marianne? Are you having trouble unmuting? Do you need to unmute you? Okay, thanks. Okay. I guess I'll do a two or three. The first one I'm going to do is a funny poem that I wrote a while ago. This is called Dogs and Cats Are Everywhere. Dogs and cats are everywhere, in your house and in your chair. I like dogs and some cats too, but I also like someone else and not someone special as you. That's that one. And then the next one I'm going to do is called Goddess. The goddess is all around. She protects her own. 
He's in nature. He has many attributes. He's the sun that warms you. He's a moon at night. He's a star shining bright. He's in all things. He can be a poet. He is known as maiden, mother, and crone. He goes by many names. He's known by the names Isis and Bass. He's also known as Sakadi. You can call upon her to help you through all the trials you have. Call upon the goddess when you need help. She will answer your prayers. The second one. And the third one I'll do is called To Joey Joe. I had a big crush on Joey Joe McIntyre from New Kids on the Block, and I wrote this poem about him a while ago. It's called To Joey Joe. I love your eyes. I love everything about you. I'm never going to diss you. You can count on me to comfort you when you're down and blue. I'll always love you too. No matter what other people say or do, I'll always love you. My love for you is very true and will stay true. I love you. Thank you, Marianne. It was You're wonderful welcome. to hear. Always Thanks. good to hear you. You got to love some Joey McIntyre, right? Yep. It's not um, yeah, let the people know where they can um, buy yeah. all your books. On Amazon, just look under my name, Marianne Pearson. You might have to scroll a little bit, but you'll find them. Absolutely. And there's eight books out there. I'm working on my ninth and tenth. That is amazing. Almost 10 books. Thanks. That, that is quite an accomplishment. Well, congratulations on that. Please go support Thanks. all our authors here tonight and artists. All right. We're going to do one more round before we shut down for the night. So I'm just going to redrop the list in the right, chat. If, if we, um, if, oh, uh, okay. Oh, in Knoxville. Okay. Um, if you don't want to perform again, your name is on the list, just let me know and we'll, we'll take you off. Um, but on deck, we have Ethan Mackler. Um, but starting round two off for us, please welcome back Chris Moore. Uh, okay. Let's see. I'm trying to remember which one I read during the first round. Um, Queen of Babylon and oh, okay. Atheist, uh Unbound. Oh, okay. Okay, so I know which one now. Thank you, Nemo. I love Nemo for paying attention. Thank you so much, Nemo. Okay, I'll just read this one then. Um, this one's called Icarus in January. Months of flying just to reach the sun. Or am I trying to run from the sun? So much has changed over the seasons. I cannot remember when I escaped my own labyrinth. A goddess hunting me down, the, the heat unbearable as the sun in the sky is always one step ahead of me. Am I to be burnt to a crisp to become a fallen angel? Thank you. That was wonderful, Chris. Thank you. And I'm glad that Nemo caught the title, so it was very helpful. Thank you, Nemo. I appreciate it. Yeah, I didn't want to repeat one of the ones that I did. <laughs> Thanks, Nemo. Even if you, but even if you did, you would have read it differently than you did the first time. In fact, like a couple weeks ago on your Thursday, I went twice because like it wasn't on the live feed and then it was, but I wrote it differently both times. So I don't ever think that's a bad thing. But mm. um, thank you for sharing with us tonight. Uh, please go check all the stuff Chris is doing out. Uh, they will drop in the chat um, where you can follow them. All right. We're going to keep going. So on deck, we got Chalky. Um, but please welcome back to the mic now, Ethan Mackley.
Some dish. I love some dish. Thank you, Ethan. Um, as Ethan mentioned before, there's a lot of local stuff going on in Massachusetts with the Garage Poets community. So give them a follow. They also have Friday shows at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. They are the brother organization of Words Right. So give them a follow and check all of that out. All right. And Chris actually just informed us that Thursday is Chris's. Um, self-produced mic is now called Dunsdays, which we love the new title change. But so at the same time, um, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time um, on, oh, wait, wait, Chris, the date change? Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Do you want to say it out loud so that people know? Uh, yeah, I guess so. So on top of my open mic on the word is right. I also do a separate one myself. Um, it used to be every third Thursday, but I changed it because a lot of stuff I discovered I'd like to go to is on a third Thursday of the month. <laughs> so, um, I changed it to the last Monday in of the month, which will be January 30th. Oh, the last Monday. Okay. All right. So everyone's going to go take like a, a mini break from New Yo on the last Monday of the month and then hop over to Chris. All right. So check that out and all the cool stuff Chris is doing. So thank you, Ethan. And thank you, Chris. And keep going. Um, so on deck, we got Nemo Soon. Uh, but back up to the mic now. Please welcome back Shocky. All right. Um, it was funny because that, that little bit you did at the end of your uh thing there ethan reminded me of the the in the heat of the night song from i don't know if you guys remember that show i might be old but <laughs> that's what it sounded like okay um i'm doing a piece it's called trading trauma i remember <clears throat> dang <clears throat> i remember nights where i couldn't decide if we were racing the moon or the moon was chasing us, but it never mattered. The way the moonlight silhouetted your face, heaven's own photograph developed in the dark rim of my heart, a memory I cannot forget. The same way I could not see the color of lies on your lips or the deceit in your eyes. Green screen background of fantasy I wish I could escape. Maybe I fell in love with trading traumas like collectibles, drinking dramas like whiskey, straight drunk on a love that does not exist. Maybe this is the hangover. Dehydrated and nauseous, trying to recover. Say this is anything other than pain would be an understatement. But I've been here before. I have shook hands with sobriety, sacrificed myself to a higher meaning. Now I know the moon is following me, pulling at my tied heart, ready for a new beginning. That's peace. It's a hell of a piece, but they're always that way. Uh, so good to hear you, Shockey. Thank you for being here. Um, please give Shockey a follow. They also just, um, they just won. Do you want to say the award you just won recently? Um, I, I grand champion uh, for Button Poetry's uh, video contest. Yeah, it's not on their Congratulations. What's going on with it? Well, we're very proud of you. Congratulations on that. Shaki actually recently made a video for my new book because um, they are wonderful and a master of that artistry. So congratulations. Um, we're incredibly proud and you are so deserving of it. Um, and Mari, welcome to our space here at Dead Pendo. If you'd like to read, please drop your name in the chat and we'll get you on the list. But we're going to keep going. Um, so thank you, Shaki. All right, on deck, we got Black Silver. Uh, but please welcome back to the mic now, Nemo Sun. Thank you very much. Um, I have another micro triptych. 
the phoenix refuses to rise. So we lay in the ashes, despair and die, staring at the ceiling, not talking. Still, because moving only makes her hold on tighter. I can feel my heartbeat slowing. Anger left hours ago. He didn't turn to look, just slammed the door. And I heard the car peeling out into the night. I don't know if he'll come back this time. I wish his absence felt peaceful. Everyone here is broken because everyone here lost the fight. The fire's gone out. The air smells like loss. And I'm waiting for someone who isn't coming. Every mistake an ember glowing, red on red, heat building until behold, the garbage phoenix rises. Every failure of feather spread across the sky like the sunset when there's a storm coming. Someone's going to die today. Someone's going to get shot right in the face today. Someone's going to fall today, going to think, so this is what it's like while they go. Someone's gonna pull the plug today, gonna swallow hard and call it off. Someone's gonna leave a note today, gonna try to explain why they gave up but fail. Someone's gonna lose a child today, gonna wanna rip the molten heart from their heaving chest. Someone's gonna get sick today, gonna have to figure out what to do with the time they have left. Someone's getting blown up today, going to be vaporized by something nobody's flying and a bomb nobody saw coming. Someone's going to get saved today, going to feel the strength of the arm that pulls them away from danger, going to cry at being worth saving. Someone's going to get born today. Someone's going to fall in love today. Someone's going to rise today, going to stand back up despite the pain despite the doubt, despite having every reason to stay down. Thank you. Damn. That was real. We need to be real. I don't know hey. to talk about it. Thank you for sharing the Michael trip with me, though. Thank you. Thank you for the space, and thank you, everyone, for the wonderful poetry and community. Absolutely, community, 100%. We need community, right? Yeah. And even when we're sick, we need community to have the spaces open because someone always needs the space, including myself. Um, so thank you. And yeah, if you're in the Charlotte area, please go check out Nemo's workshops and Grill Poets and all the amazing stuff um, they do for their community, not just online, but um, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, all right, we're gonna keep going. On deck, we got Marissa Prada, but Black to the mic now. Please welcome Black Silver. Okay, I got two pieces. <clears throat> I got two pieces. The first piece is called, uh, the four wolves prayer and the second piece is called maybe I'm a wolf. So uh, we'll start out with the four wolves prayer. Here we go. I call upon the wolves of the sky, the phoenix that is Fenris who lives betwixt earth and heaven where I have been betrayed. My enemies will find a blackened sky and lightning upon their heads. I call upon the wolves of the ocean they who keep silent, they who listen. I douse myself in water and give repentance. I forget to remember. I call upon the wolves of the earth. He who has some will be given more. Where there is one, there is four. I call upon the hellhounds of fire. Let this be a lullaby. May war pass me by. Let sleeping dogs lie. But when it is your time, I will be by your side. And the second piece is called uh, Maybe I'm a Wolf. So this is the first wolf piece that I ever uh, did. And so um, hopefully I can memorize it. So here we go. 
I must be a wolf, cause I like the forest and the cold weather. Whatever weather, I will survive, cause I'm an apex predator. I must be a wolf. I gotta be a wolf. There's no way I can't be a wolf. I cried when the wolf died in Little Red Riding Hood. Could my sadness be misunderstood? No way. Who's to say grandmother didn't have it coming her way? That's just how a wolf behaves. No shame in the game. Wolves are bloodthirsty. It's nothing funny. You kill all the wolves, you have a crap load of bunnies. You see nature isn't all sunny. You gotta have a nighttime to define the lines. That's why wolves have no regret. They don't mean no disrespect. They're just bringing balance to the planet. And you'll see I am that wolf like the ring around my neck. I command respect like the bass in the soundtrack. I only look forward because the wolf has my back. And they know my name, Black Silver. Black silver, black silver, they say it proudly, but quietly, because we're always on the hunt. Can't wait to munch in front. That's another reason why I must be a wolf. Because I love to eat. For me, devouring meat tastes like victory and defeat, like making harmony a part of me. So it's clear to see the hunt with wolves is my destiny. That's maybe I'm a wolf. Maybe we're all wolves. I'll get a hell. We gotta find another full moon that Ray J can lean so we can all hell at the moon again. But not when my voice takes this. Also, crap a little bunny. That might be my favorite line ever. Kill all the it's wolves, poetry, yeah. crap little bunnies. Crap little bunnies. That's a brilliant line. Thank you, Black Silver. Check out their jewelry line. Check out their poetry. Give them a follow and all the amazing things. And you can catch them here on the first and third Tuesdays of the month of Dead Man Dope and many of our other open mics and workshops. Thank you, Black Silver. Also, I want to acknowledge Nemo is going to be featuring on Chris's show here at The Word is Right. Um, more poetry next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and as you can see, Nemo is amazing, so you don't want to miss that feature next Wednesday. And Nemo will be featuring again with Rich Boucher. Is that how you say Rich's last name? March 26th, 5th. I know I'm running a race that day, and it's either the 25th or the 26th. I'm close. Whatever that Saturday is. I mean, I let me pull it up. It's either the 25th or 26th. I have a race in New York City that day. Yeah, we, you know, what's really exciting is like we have a lot of, yeah, we have a lot of stuff coming up. So, um, so this Saturday is the movie night, right? So we have Pretty Woman versus The Bodyguard. Uh, then, um, but Rich Boucher is going to be with Nemo March 25th. 25th. And we go. have Tab and Arsene will be double featuring on March 18th. But also, like, we have Ngoma Hill and Avacha, January 14th, Sky's the Limit, Prince McNally on the 21st, Tori Led, Sophia Falco on the 28th. Tori Letts' show is, is debuting this month, the, thir the third Sunday. That's a new fun thing. Um, yeah, we have Jeff Taylor and Namu, February <clears throat> 11th. Uh, so, yeah, there's just a lot of fun things coming coming to the word is right and then erotica we have royal drench on january 9th so if you want to come back for erotica like it's very sexy that's all good but definitely check rich and nemo out that's a dynamic duo right there they're both wonderful uh wonderful poets and artists so you don't want to miss that march 25th here at the word is right um i'll probably just i mean i have a I actually am running a race in Governor's Island that morning where we spit poetry for the New York City Poetry Festival. So I'm just running loops around where we all bless the space with our poetry, right? There you go. Me and Maddie and I are Yeah, why not? Poets run in circles around the poets. There you go. All right, 63. I think it's just a, I think it's just a 10K. <laughs> I think so. At 63 miles, God. I think the most the most miles I've ever run is 30. That's the most miles I've run in like one in one time is 30 That's miles. Like 29 miles too much for me. 
<laughs> so you can do one. <laughs> yeah, she did like 27 miles on like a Sunday one day. And I was like, oh, so you like walked it? And she was like, no, nah, I ran. Yeah, I yeah. I'm a her. Marissa, <laughs> so most people in the space, and Marissa does know this, I'm a marathon runner. And that wasn't my first marathon. It, it was my second. And I was supposed to run the Brooklyn Marathon in person last April. Um, but while I was having my breakdown, I needed to postpone something, postpone something slash, there's a big slash there. They had changed the course. They, it was gonna, you were gonna like run through Dumbo, which is one of my favorite neighborhoods in Brooklyn. And instead of doing that for, they said it was for COVID, but I didn't really understand that excuse. Um, it was going back to Prospect Park where I had run a marathon in Prospect Park the fall before. And how long is a marathon? 26.2 miles. Uh, yeah. I did 27. Like 20, it's like 27 miles yeah. too long for me. Yeah, yeah 27. But it really <laughs> comes out to 27, but it's supposed to be 26.2. But um, they had changed the course for the new Brooklyn Marathon last April where you were running the last couple laps in Prospect Park. And when I did that, even though I finished the marathon in Prospect Park, I got serious vertigo from it. Um, one of our fellow poets actually had to like carry my ass to Queens later that night because I wasn't but I finished like I'd have never not finished a race but when I postponed my race in April they said that I could do it virtually which meant and a lot of people do it virtual marathons it's a pretty common thing these days you just track it on GPS on your phone um like Strava or Map My Run or a Garmin um and so just in one sitting you have to complete a full marathon. It's like 26.2 to 27 miles. So I just chose a day before the end of the year when it wasn't bitterly cold here in New York and did it and submitted it. And they sent me my medal and everything. Um, but yeah, I've done a lot of half marathons, a few full marathons. I think in practice, I've done 30 once around New York City. And then um, I've actually only officially done one 5K. And I've actually never done a, um, just like a 10K race. So this will actually probably be my first like just official 10K. But I mean, for those of us that were at Governor's Island and have been, I mean, Marissa, Marissa and Brian, I think are the only two in the room who were at least with me. I don't know if anyone else has been to Governor Island generally. It's not that big. So we're kind of just running around the quad once and then like, kind of by where the Statue of Liberty was and just kind of back. That's kind of what we're doing. And it, it should take like, I don't know, 40 minutes. Not that bad. The only marathons but, I've done are Netflix ones. <laughs> Netflix? What did you say? Netflix? The only marathons I, I run are Netflix ones. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, the other thing. No, but also... Also, all the, but I'm also doing this and I'll get more into it when it officially goes live in a couple of weeks. I'm actually doing this race with Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS. They're a partner of my company and they are one of the biggest nonprofit organizations in the country and the world. They raise money for people who are still living uh, with HIV AIDS for their family. They provide medical treatment. They provide food services like Meals on Wheels for people who are unable. So I will be putting out the donation link for that. The money doesn't go to me. The money goes to this incredible organization that saves lives and makes it easier for people to live their lives and not just exist. Um, so if you aren't familiar with Broadway Cares Equity Fight States, I highly recommend you check them out. Um, I've been working with them for almost a decade now, and I can't say enough good things about them. Um, so I'm very happy I can run in this 10K for them. And now the money I raise and that Matthew will raise will go towards them. Um, but yeah, we'll talk more about that later. We're here for the poetry now to hear me talk about running a marathon. But um, yes, that's where I will, um, I, Maddie and I will be doing that. Um, I, did Black Silver just go, right? Really? I was talking for a while. Was that the last person that went was Black Silver? Yeah, I went. Thank you. <laughs> I was talking for a while. All right, thank you, Black Silver. So. Actually, this is perfect. So we're going to go back now to Marissa Prada, who's our executive producer. Uh, okay, so I'll read again American Graveyard. Uh, pick from 1 to 198. 132. Okay, I, oh, I did not get that G. 
Say that again. 132. I got 132. I'm going to type it in the chat. Okay. 132. All right. Now, it might be cheating because he already has seen the manuscript, so he already knows who's on whatever page that is. So let me scroll down. Watch me his. <laughs> Just kidding. We're past the G's. Okay, 132 is uh, Meher Pestonji. She's a, a really great poet, and this is her piece, Gun Man. If you have a gun, you learn to shoot on empty cans, making noise without pain. But when your head is bursting pain, noise kills. Brain boils into swirls, blurring vision, curdling dreams into anger cannons, congealing the unfelt pain of street dogs, carcasses, broken humans into one monstrous mass. Helpless against slippery walls, you skid into bottomless abyss where shiny gray gun invites an end to pain. Demolish noise, demolish pain, with fanfare and drama, enter a nebulous world of nothingness. No noise, no pain, nothing. Poem. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, we're really proud of this anthology. Uh, check out our green books and all the stuff Marissa does for the press, uh, sponsor a senator, because we do need, um, we do need senselessness to go away. It's 2023, um, parents and loved ones can't get phone calls anymore, whether it's at school or at a grocery store or Walmart or a bar or uh, a place of worship um, that someone has been murdered just because of who they are. Um, so please check out this book. So that we can we can make real waves in um, protecting each other. That's what these books are for, right? Humanism and protecting each other. Um, so thank you, Hermesa, for all the work you do um, to make sure that um, we take the right steps moving forward as a society and a community. Thank you so much. Um, also, I just really like the beans. That's a cool bean. So, what's the name of the gym? Define fitness. See, it's like a, it's like a bar. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it. It's yeah, very and if you're in New Mexico, you're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, go take one of Marissa's classes at Define Fitness. <laughs> no, I'm serious. They did no, not. We did not get paid. This is not advertisement. We're not getting paid to do this. I right? was just saying. Well, we do, we do get Apple. paid to. Can I take one of your classes? Teach. Yeah, G, come, 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 get in the pool. It'd be wonderful. Oh, it's, what is it? It's a pool aerobics. Aerobic. Oh my lord! I also I do know. silver sneakers and fit kids, so fun. I'll do the, the <coughs> silver sneakers. Yeah, so it, it, I mean, Marissa does get paid to teach the classes in Albuquerque. That's one of Marissa's parallel careers. But yes, go check that. I don't know if Define Fitness is a national corporation or just Albuquerque. Just Albuquerque. Okay. Well, it's, well, New Mexico. New, oh, New Mexico. It's a state. Well, if you're in New Mexico, go check out a water aerobics class. And I know they're intense because Marissa told me their classes are actually will kick your butt. So if I if I were there, I would do it. Um, I think it would be fun. Also, when I come to Charlotte, I think I'm going to run a race. I just have to learn how to make steak and coffee better. But I'm probably going to run a race when I'm in Charlotte. Anyway. Um, so on deck, we got Marianne Peterson. And um, coming up to the mic now, we have Brian. Ah, so I found this earlier today. It is a group of four micro poems about true love, and then another piece, and then another love poem. So bear with me one second. I just had it right here. So four mic micro poems about true love. True love is the ability to massage someone's heart with your words. 
True love is the ability to wipe a tear from a crying eye with a smile. True love is never telling someone what they cook needs salt. True love is knowing how to execute a hug over the phone. This is called maestro. Close your eyes. Open your hands wide, take a shallow breath, the type of breath you take when you are aware the air is fresh, void of pollution, an unspoiled shoreline or mountaintop. My arms are beginning to wrap around your back. The tips of the fingers on my left hand are touching the curve of your left shoulder. My right hand is against the small of your back, below your right shoulder. The beat of my heart quickens because you are you. I inhale through my nose, which makes a slight whistling sound. As I release my breath, my heartbeat slows a bit. You inhale through your mouth as your arms surround me like a non-restrictive straitjacket. Your fingers grip my sides and back where my rib cage resides. As you let out a soft, exhalatory sigh, I feel your heartbeat through my chest. Its rhythm permeates the atmosphere. We have composed a symphonic duet for flute and harp that can only be heard with eyes closed and open souls. Thank you. Let's go, Thank Chief. You. That was beautiful, Brian. Thank you so much for being here and sharing. Uh, you can get a copy of Brian's book uh, through them or his Reagan books and check out their open mic cafe generally from 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, first and third Mondays of the month. And also tomorrow night, my Twisted Twin Nick Vale Logos hosts their mic right to the mic. Um, it's an eight o'clock workshop and then live feed for the open mic at nine o'clock Eastern oh, Standard yeah. Time. So go check Nick out every first and third Wednesdays of the month. Uh, they give wonderful prompts. So please go support um, all our word is right um, folks. And anyway, thank you so much, Brian. Um, welcome, Demetrius, if you'd like to um, Get on here, welcome. If you'd like to get on the list, uh, please drop your name in the chat and I will add you. Be any blessing. All right, we're gonna keep going. Yeah. Um, also, if anyone's in the space for the first time, I'm under the weather, so that's why I sound like this. Um, but hopefully next time I'll feel feel better. Um, on deck, we um, we have Demetrius, so please welcome to the mic, back to the mic, Marion Peterson. Okay, <clears throat> this is a song I wrote. I started writing it April 10th, 1996. I finished it January 27th, 1997. And this is called Women Are Men at Heart. This is the first time I'm performing it too. Women are as strong as men. A woman can do anything a man can. Women are not less important than men. Women are men. No man has the right to think a woman is weak, cause it's not true. Woman can make as much impact as the world as a man. Women are important too. Women can do anything if they put their minds to it. Women are men at heart. Women are men at heart. The only difference between man and woman is women are more gentle. Don't do that. I'll fall asleep. Don't do that. I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. You're welcome. Uh, always, good to, always good to hear you on guitar. Um, yep. They read their poetry earlier. They have their 10th book coming out soon, but please buy the other eight first oh, and support there. all our authors and artists here tonight and everything we do. Um, thank you so much, Marianne. It's always good to see you. Happy New Year. And happy, happy early birthday. Thanks. All right. Um, if, so we're going to have our final artist uh, perform right now. But if anyone is in our space and would like um, to get on the open mic list before we do our I statement, and Marissa is going to do the Beanie Blessing uh, for a close up evening, just let me know in the chat and I'll add you to the list. Um, but this person is new to me and new to the Dead Pan Dope space. So we're going to give a nice Beanie Blessings welcome to Demetrius. Hello. 
Hello, yeah. everyone. Hi, Marissa. Happy New Year. <laughs> so I was bringing up, um, I was trying to bring up my poetry, but I didn't know I was going to come on so soon. So since it's still spinning, I'm just going to do um, a piece titled Words Are. Um, I think it's a great introduction of myself and um, about poetry. On a night like this, my words come as celestial gifts, igniting your endorphins into insight. Each syllable appears throughout the universe so bright. How many souls will they touch tonight? You have yet to hear the verbal thrashing of me. This is not the first, and nor will it be the last time I speak my peace. I only ask that you understand these words that are not perfectly planned to make you hoop and holler for my grandstand. When I speak, I am a preacher's muse. Some say my voice is the Lord's ark and my message is the stock that feeds hearts. I come to nurture your minds, plant and sow seeds that will carry throughout your heritage bloodline. I don't claim to redefine poetry. It defines me. It can't be tallied up to say who's the best and who sucks. It's not a night of verbal potluck to be claimed, owned, or to put an individual on the throne. Words speak for all of us at some point in time. Together in agreement and in sequential order, our heads nod. Words of verbal expressions that describe, explain, and sustain the meaning of life. Words toss and turn and get tangled up in the yarn of my brain tissue. Weaving sentences and paragraphs from woven once spoken words. My words are delivered to you in a poetic cocktail for you to taste. And in the haste, you will be as an alcoholic wine connoisseur asking for more. My words, they make love like war. Your emotion and composure are explored as ease from breath, unrest, undress, and digest your interests. Word origin and analogies, propositioning you to construe in a critic seat. Your criteria, my phraseology must meet. Words stretch to the far reaches of the earth. And every day we give birth to new ones and we lose some that become unmentionable words. Words of man, words of woman. Words can nurture or destroy a life. Words are as deadly as a screwdriver in the kidneys, penetrating and twisting, weakening, draining, containing, and rendering you lifeless. From the tongue, words cut like a knife, traveling on a verbal barge. Words are reachable, seeable, conceivable, and teachable, addictive, permissive, and are able to direct to a common sense of incommunicated decisions. When written all over your face, you don't have to say a word. Words are ingredients of the soul that flow like mud water. Words mean so much, words mean so little. Words are removable labels that peel off when the inconceivable is no longer believable. If you embrace the word and feel the word, invest in the word and become the word, you will find words are, words are words, a poetry. Words are poetry. I'm gonna break it down for you. Words are poetry. If I were a butterfly, a black butterfly, I would be etched in at crew blue and you'd want to catch me and attempt to touch the silk of night. I hem the sky with rotary dives, fluttering my crepe paper wings, and bring you instant happiness within my erratic flight, an outlining window to the other side of celestial wonder. Words are words, a poetry, poem. Let's go, Demetrius, let's go, <laughs> yes! Thank you, thank you. Hey. Thank you for thank coming to our space. And if Nick Caleb just would hear, he would say, one of us, one of us. One so of us, one of us. <laughs> I, I can't do it tonight because I'm under the weather. But thank you for joining us. Um, is there anything you'd like to promote you have going on, any books for sale? Well, I have um, two singles out. One is titled Men of Steel. And um, that's streaming on all digital platforms. And you can also, you know, pull it up on YouTube. Just type in Demetrius Ford, Men of Steel, um, because there's a lot of Men of Steels out there. And then my uh, first uh, club house single <coughs> titled Getting It In Over the Weekend is also streaming on all digital platforms. So please, you know, check out uh, both of them. Yeah, definitely give Demetrius a follow. Check out everything they're doing. Welcome to our space. We hope you'll come back. Uh, for all our words, right? So, the Dead Pan Dope is every first and third Tuesday of the month at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Where are you? Uh, where are you streaming from today? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Okay. Yes. Well, welcome, welcome, Philly, into the space. Thank you for being here. Um, 
thank you to everyone that was here today, even those who didn't perform, Reba and Lottie. Uh, thank you for joining us and supporting our community as always. I um, also want to thank Chris Moore. Uh, they just left, but uh, Chris Moore and Shalky were on standby for me tonight. Um, if I had really not been able to do this, um, that's the girl I've strapped and it's just kicking my ass. But I wanted to make sure the space stayed open um, and that we were a community, especially in the name. Um, and we're going to do our I statement and then Marissa's going to do the Beanie Blessing and we're going to we're gonna call it a night. So let me do the screen share. Because um, here at Dead Pan Dope, we do work on ourselves. Um, and of course, you can do this as a poem, you don't have to do it at all, but I do leave some homework with everyone um, at the end of the night. Let me do the screen share. So tonight's I statement is I feel powerful. Right. We're in our new year, whether we got struck or asthma or whatever else, why do we feel powerful? Artistic license, you can do a traditional ice statement, you can do a poem, want to write a song, you don't have to do it at all. It's just an optional homework assignment. Um, you don't have to share it with anyone, but I like to leave it with each other. This is how we do a traditional ice statement, right? I feel when and because then we can insert anywhere it doesn't have to be on this wheel of feeling but i do use this for myself i did my i statements this morning after my real estate meeting um, but yeah so anyone's interested in that i feel powerful i'll also drop it on the word is right page and on my page you can follow me at ig yes underscore strauss or elizabeth sophia strauss of phia on facebook that's where you can mostly find me um yeah, and also I, I said at the beginning of the show for those who came in late, uh, January 31st, which is the fifth Tuesday of the month here, I will be teaching a sonnet workshop. It won't be live stream. Um, it is a paid workshop. We're asking only $5, just $5. Um, if you wanna learn more about that, all the information is under the events on where it is right, or you can reach out to Marissa or myself um, and once you register, I will send you the private Zoom information um, that we ask you not to share with anyone that hasn't uh, paid or registered for the class. But I'm looking forward to teaching that in a couple of weeks. Um, I just I thank our community um, and I hope to see you tomorrow night at Nick Pale Logo Show. If I'm not feeling this way and at Sarah Mel Mentals, Girl Poets and all the other stuff our community does. So I'm gonna pull up the Beanie Blessing for Marissa and then we're gonna we're gonna call it a night. So let me pull up the beginning blessing. <clears throat> All right, here we go. Beanie blessings. We close out our time together, staring up at the same sky. Whether the sun kisses down on your gentle face, the cotton candy clouds begin to swirl in the early evening. The crescent moon fades in as the constellations begin to dance throughout the night. We all look up at the same sky. Thank you for blessing the sky, soil beneath our feet and our family with your presence and art. Thank you for taking the time to create. Thank you for holding space. May you squirt out poems, kitty style in dreamland. May we always have beanies to keep us warm and stylish. This has been the Deadpan Dope Tuesday open mic with the word is right hosted by Deadpan Lizzie, on be the beanie god. On behalf of our community, I, Marissa Prada, bid you adieu until next time. Beanie blessings. Beanie blessings. Bye, Beanie. everyone.